Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. I've got a brilliant Festool CT26 extractor. I've had it for about three years and it's absolutely brilliant. However, I've only got the one. And so when I want to switch from using a tool like this to using my uh, brilliant Capex saw, which I've got behind me, I've got to start moving hoses around. Well, I'm in the sort of static workshop environment and I thought, well, this is silly. I'm sure I can do something about it. So I've had a go, and some of you may have seen a prototype in the background of some of my recent videos. Well, this is what I've been up to. Well, that's the prototype uh, out of the way. I'll now put the new one in. This is the dust hub, and it's a means of connecting several tools to a single extractor and it also provides the power to those tools. And it's important that those two things are linked together, as you'll see shortly. Now, the vacuum side of this is very simple. Uh, on the right-hand side here, you see some clear pipework, and that is uh, going to my CT26 extractor. Now, all of this uh, is constructed from parts that I've got from Axminster Power Tools, and uh, it's their 63 millimeter kit. Now you can buy this 63 millimeter ducting, in fact it's called two and a half inch ducting here, uh, in, a, in a box as a complete set. In fact you don't need to buy the whole lot, you can just buy the individual parts that you need. So you can build your system to suit your needs very simply and easily. Now the absolute minimum that you need uh, for the most basic system, and that was my prototype, if you remember what that looked like, uh, are two blast gates and one of these T-pieces plus a length of the pipe. You need the length of the pipe because you need to be able to come out from here to then make your connection uh, to the rest of the world. Now in order to create the system uh, that I'm showing you now, my finished dust hub, uh, you actually need three blast gates and two of these T-pieces. And you still need one length of pipe. And when you're making up uh, a dust hub like this, I would suggest that you make it reasonably solidly uh, so that these blast gates are well supported. Uh, there are uh, predefined screw holes in them and I've made sure that I've used all four of those screws into something solid so that they're well supported. And let me show you now what attracted me uh, to this system. This is the end of my uh, Festool 27mm hose and here is a blast gate. And if you look carefully, that pushes in there and is held nice and firmly. If you take any of the standard fittings that come with the kit. The Festal hose will push in there quite firmly. It's not actually pushing into uh, this piece where the join would normally be made, but it's pushing into uh, the inner pipe area. But it's still a firm and airtight seal. And then inside the dust hub, uh, there's a little bit more of this 63 millimeter uh, pipework, a number of uh, T-junctions, uh, to connect to three blast gates. And the blast gates are all part of the same family of bits and pieces. I've got one at the front, which I've got my 27 millimeter hose connected to. I've got one at the side here, dedicated to the capex, and that's got a 36 millimeter hose. And then there's one at the top here, and during the course of this video, we'll be extending this system from this top uh, blast gate, uh, which will eventually go to somewhere else in the workshop. Now, the key to these systems is, is that you want to keep uh, the runs really as short as possible, because the more gubbins you put between your extractor and your power tool, uh, the less efficient that uh, a vacuum is going to be by the time it gets uh, to the power tool. And the most important tool for me to have a really efficient uh, uh, vacuum uh, su support is the Capex. So therefore the Capex uh, vacuum supply goes straight through, uh, straight through the uh, dust hub uh, and out the other side. So it's the, uh, the least affected route. If you're going to make something like this, keep all your uh, blast gates close together because what you don't want is to have uh, miles of pipe connected uh, from something like this uh, and the bl blast gate at the far end of it because all that does is create uh, a length of 
a pipe which is going to interfere through eddy currents uh, with the uh, flow when you're using other blast gates uh, connected to the extractor. So keep your blast gates together if you can. Now let's look at the power supply arrangements uh, as they are at the moment. In this wall socket in my workshop, I've got my CT26 uh, extractor connected there and it's switched on. Now the uh, dust hub has its own power cable and it's this one here and that goes round the corner and is plugged into the front of the CT26. These two pairs of sockets uh, are actually supplied uh, by the power that's coming from the CT26. And that now means that if a tool starts that's connected here, then that is causing the extractor to start because it's supplying the power. And then whichever one of these blast gates is open, that's where the suction is going to be applied. So we've been using the uh, sander and everything works fine, but we now want to go on uh, to use the Capex saw. Because the dust hub has both power and blast gates in one position, uh, it means you can manage the system very, very simply. So changing from uh, using the sander to the uh, capex is very simple. I switch the sander power supply off and shut its blast gate. That means I can't accidentally turn this on and have no vacuum support for it. At the same time, I'm going to open the blast gate for the capex and turn its power supply on, which means now the capex is getting the vacuum support it needs. And switching back again, the reverse routine. And that's it. It's as simple as that. It takes seconds to do that and you've reconfigured your system and you're getting the vacuum support where you need it. But there are some little uh, tricks you can do with this. Uh, for example, uh, every now and again you want to do a little bit of a, a workshop cleanup. Perhaps uh, uh, clean your a capex or whatever it might be. Well, this is how you can do that. Right, I have here uh, a plug which goes to this light which is above the capex. I don't need the light very often um, and really um, it's of no great uh, use other than for this next trick. I'm going to shut the blast gate to the capex, switch off its power supply. I'm going to open the blast gate for what was the sander, but I've now got my little brush attachment here. So there I am. How do I now use this? Ordinarily, uh, you'd have had to go around and manually switch the uh, extractor on in order to do this. But all you have to do with this arrangement is turn the light on. And away you go. And so you can now do a clean up and you can control things straight away. But you can take it just a little bit further. Uh, if you get one of these uh, remotely operated switches and plug that in there and plug your light into that switch and you take the uh, control unit and tell it that uh, this is that device. So now you've got your remote control, you've got this in your hand and wherever you want to go in the workshop, you can turn on the power and turn it off again. It's as simple as that. So if you're not lucky enough to have a Festool extractor which uh, turns itself on and off whenever a tool plugged into it gets turned on and off, uh, you can uh, do as follows. Plug the dust hub into your wall socket and turn the power on. Then connect your extractor to one of the sockets on the dust hub and then your tools into the other sockets. And for those tools, you follow the same routine of switching things on and opening blast gates and so on. And whenever you need to start the extractor, press the switch for the extractor. And then whenever you need to use the tool, press the right switch, checking that its blast gate is open. And that's your routine if you don't have an automatic uh, start on your extractor. Now, when it comes to cut, cutting the tubing to length, uh, obviously mark it first, and then you could take it to your uh, mitre saw um, or any other power saw, as long as you are careful. Uh, but I'm going to cut this by hand just to show you how easy it is to do it. 
And in order to get a nice straight line, uh, I just put a piece of masking tape like this around there. And that's really given me a nice line to follow. I'm going to use one of these uh, cheap and cheerful uh, Japanese style saws, uh, which I got from uh, one of the DIY superstores. And I'm now going to make my cut. And the trick here is I've got my vise open just a little bit. And as you're doing the cutting, just rotate the pipe very slowly. And then just clean up with a bit of sandpaper, remove the tape. So I've cut this piece. I've put a little joining, a straight join piece on here. So I can now connect it uh, to this top blast gate here. And it's just going to go on like so. And just push it down firmly. And because this pipe is uh, just a little bit away from this wall, I've made up a bracket on a block of wood. And so uh, that should hold it at the right angle. Well, it seems to be okay, so I'll test it. Yeah, I got my suction here. Now, we already know that the end of the Festival hose is just slightly too uh, small to fit uh, snugly in this tubing. But I'm going to show you a way now of making the tubing slightly narrower. So in order to make the tube slightly uh, thinner in the middle, uh, I've got it suspended from the ceiling. I've got a weight here. Uh, and I want it to spin at an even rate. Now I'm going to get my hot air gun and I'm going to warm it up. Well, I've not done that for very long and um, it's shrunken a little bit there. And I'm just going to leave it now with the tension uh, to cool. Now this is the one I've just done and it shrunk uh, that diameter down by about a millimetre and a half, maybe two millimetres. Uh, and it's not quite enough for the demonstration I'm about to show you. Uh, but this is one I did earlier. It is uh, the same tubing. Uh, and you can see that it fits quite nicely into the hose socket of my extractor. And so you can make up uh, little bits of tubing uh, to suit your various needs very easily with this method. Well, there you are. There's my dust hub, uh, which I've now got permanently installed in my workshop. And if I want to take my extractor away with me, I just disconnect it at the far end and away I go. And all this stuff just stays where it is. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.